All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel, Santiago AQ over here, and today we're going to be discussing everything you need to know about matching into a competitive specialty. But given that I haven't matched into a competitive specialty myself, I thought I might ask for some help to someone who has actually done it. That's why I'm bringing Dr. Malk Asad to this video to help me out answer all of your questions. So please, Dr. Malk, roll in and present yourself in front of everyone. Hey guys, I want to start by thanking Santiago for inviting me to talk on his channel. Santiago, your channel is great, amazing content, and I'm sure so many future applicants are finding your content extremely helpful in their residency journey. For those who don't know me, my name is Malki Assad, originally from Syria. I did medical school in, uh, in Aleppo in Syria. I did two years of research. Uh, the first one is at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Second one is at the uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And last week I matched into plastic surgery residency at the University of Pittsburgh. Okay, so let's get down to business. First of all, I want to know, what's the deal with USMLE scores? Do I really need a 250 plus in the USMLE Step 1 and a 260 plus in the USMLE Step 2 CK? Do I even have a chance at matching into a competitive specialty? And if you notice, when you look at the NRMP data, you see that there is a big difference between those who match and those who don't match. So you see that those who match for most specialties is higher than the scores for those who don't match. But for some competitive specialties, you might see that the score for those who don't match is the same as those who match, or maybe if one or two points different. The more surprising part, and actually we did a study about that, we compared plastic surgery applicants, IMGs versus US applicants, and we noticed that there was no difference between those who matched and those who did not match in USMLE step one and step two scores. The more surprising part is that those who matched into plastic surgery as IMGs had lower scores than US applicants who did not match. Oh, right. That's interesting, but it makes me wonder though, if not scores, then what? That was surprising to me in the beginning. I always thought that as an IMG, you have to have higher scores compared to US applicants in order to match into competitive specialties. But if you continue and look at the data, you see that there is a huge difference in the number of publications, presentations, and abstracts. You see that IMGs who match into competitive specialties has, have almost three or four or five times the number of publications compared to US applicants. This can tell you that these applicants spend some time doing research in a research lab or working with mentors to get that number of publications. And while they're doing that, they established connections that help them match into these competitive specialties. So as I did in one of my videos, and we also did a study about that, the value of research goes beyond publications goes beyond just having some extra lines on your CV. Besides having all these publications, presentations, research helps you establish connections with people who can get you into a residency spots. Well, I must say that makes total sense. And in fact, I've spoken with dozens of IMGs who've matched into competitive specialties, and each and every one of them has said exactly the same, that networking, which is what he was referring to, is almost as, if not more important, than scores themselves. But in any case, next question, are all publications valued equally? Like for example, if I just do 15 publications out of pure abstracts and case reports, will that be useful for my application? When we look at numbers, numbers matter, but also quality. So sometimes uh, some applicants have a lot of case reports, a lot of abstracts that might not be looked upon positively. One thing I always found interesting in the way that NRMP reports the results of research output, which is could be presentation where you go to a meeting and present your work either as an oral presentation or poster, abstracts, which are the, 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 the work that was accepted to a meeting, but it's not the full text article, and publications. They clump all these things together, although there is a huge difference in the amount of work required for a publication compared to an abstract or a presentation. When these things get clumped together and you see, for example, 10 or 12, that doesn't mean 10 publications. It means one paper could have been made as two abstracts and each abstract was presented once. So you can get five of these by one single project or one single publication. Okay, that's useful to keep in mind. Now, what about USCE? Like, do I really need to do rotations? Are they really that important? Clinical rotations are extremely important when applying to residency in the US. Because at the end of the day, we have to remember, residency is a 
clinical job it's not a research job so you have to have that clinical experience in the u.s different countries have different healthcare systems and program directors and the selection committee will make sure that you are aware of how this system works and the way to know that is to do clinical rotations in the form of electives or observerships to make sure that you are fit within this system you know how things are going and you can be a successful resident it can also help you get letters of recommendation which is the other point i want to talk about from a clinical standpoint okay that's a very good point and in fact if we see the nrmp data we see that lords are one of the most important things for program directors to rank applicants so totally makes sense now what about volunteering work experience phds masters in science are those things really useful i don't think that work experiences and volunteer experiences are as important as step one step two letters of recommendation but they're still important you still have to have some interest outside medicine or the, the specialty you're applying to this is what makes you unique what makes you stand out if you have done some contributions to your community or you've traveled somewhere and helped people uh, outside your country that's something good to add on your cv and a contribution that you can uh, have a conversation on during the interview now moving on to phds and other graduate degrees it is not a significant determinant of whether you'll match or not because if you look at the data the it seems that the matching rate is similar, but one uh, factor that might be affecting this result is the small number of applicants with a master's degree or a PhD. It definitely gives you extra tools and skills that can help you when you're doing your research as a resident or as a faculty afterwards. So definitely having a master's degree would be an extra positive on your CV. Uh, it shows that you have some skills, but I think this is not the important question that you should be asking yourself. The question I, I always try to ask people is, are you planning to do a master's versus something else? Time is a limited uh, thing we have. We, we don't have unlimited time. We have limited time to graduate, do research, uh, publish papers, do clinical experience, establish connections. So the question is, is pursuing a master's, which is going to be one or two years, gonna take time from US clinical experience, doing actual research and publishing papers, uh, being able to interact with US physicians or not. Because generally when you're doing your masters, you're not interacting with US physicians. You're generally taking classes and, and doing some statistical work. So you lose one part of the research I was talking about, which is the connections. Okay, so let's say someone checks all the boxes. Research, USC, of course, he has everything. Does checking all of the boxes we have said guarantee him a match? Or is there something else he should be working on? Like, what have you seen, personally? I've known some applicants who received a lot of interviews, but they did not match. One potential reason, there might be other reasons, but one potential reason is interview skills. Sometimes people are not accustomed to, uh, to this stress of an interview job, or they're extremely nice, but they cannot convey that during an interview. Okay, Dr. Malk, one last thing, even that I know everybody's gonna ask, how can I get into research? Research is a question I get asked about a lot. And I think that there are many factors that need an individualized approach. There is no one single advice that you can give to everyone. I have talked to so many students and the approach I pursue with, with someone who is just graduated from medical school, have great scores is different from someone who has been away from their uh, from their medical training or or did residency in their home country and practiced some years and now they're pursuing residency so you have to tailor that based on your experience based on what you have and take the advice of somebody experienced with doing research to find the right research for you because although i've seen so many people succeed after pursuing research I've seen more failure stories. I've seen more people who did research for one, two, three years and got nothing out of it. So you have to be in the right place with the right people doing the right thing. And that needs an individualized approach with someone who is experienced to help you get where you want to go. All right. Anything else, Dr. Asad? If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and me and Santiago will, will respond to that. You can also feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page Malki Asad MD. 
I have several YouTube videos related to the topics discussed here, residency match, interviewing on my YouTube channel, Malki Asad. Thank you so much, Santiago, for having me, and good luck, everyone. You heard the man. As always, thanks for tuning, and we'll see you guys in the next video. All the other guys got cash for days I don't really care cause all my days Got your name on them Sign your name on them I don't see the point of the bling 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 Saving all my love for a single ring With your name on it